Afternoon, tier three. Tier three, a beautiful day. How are we? Um, all the snow's gone. I had snow here yesterday. All the snow's gone. I'll make my tea. And um, I'll just to let you know, there's still a lot of work going on near me. And then again, there might be a little, little bit of drilling, I think. Um, hopefully, it'll be quiet for us, only 10 minutes or so. Um, we're all good. Um, today, stress awareness week this week, stress awareness, and this is number 60, this is the diamond tier three, the diamond tier three, so if you've seen them all, give yourself a little medal, um, and if you haven't, why haven't you watched them all, uh, number 60, so it's amazing, I'll just make my tea there, and yeah, we're going to talk about managing stress, my stress is being caused by my neighbours, um, there we go, if you can hear that banging, live from my kitchen, um, so we've got that, I've got a question, Hi, Carlos. You all right? I'm good. I've got a choice of biscuits as well today. I've got a jammy dodger, tradish jammy dodger, the ridge. And also I've got a coffee bean cookie made by my colleague, Flora, who sent me some cookies and hot cross buns for Easter. A lovely colleague. Um, so shout out to Flora and uh, very good coffee bean cookies. Coffee and tea. I don't know if that's right, but uh, that's what I've got. Um, I've got a question. Because everybody's very excited about Line of Duty, which is on the telly at the moment. Everybody's very excited about that. I'm sure, watching it. But um, I thought, I wonder what. No, no, don't duck. No, I'm not having that. I'm not having tea and jam. Can't be getting involved with that. But I do eat round the jam and then save all the jam. I do that, uh, which is probably very childish for a 50 plus year old man. Anyway, my question today, I've got a question. Um, what is the largest audience ever for a UK TV programme? The largest recorded audience for TV programme in millions. And if you want to go for it, tell me what, what the, what the programme was. Yeah. So um, 10 million. Serious big box. Come on, you can do better than that. Um, so largest ever audience, <laughs> definitely not for Line of Duty, you guys. <laughs> you know, you know, it's not that. 44 million, five, mi five million. It's, I think Blue Pay gets more than five million. You can have another guess, Clara. That's so bad. Um, you can tell me the program if you like. Um, um, if you fancy 20, <laughs> yes, you've nailed it. Sam, that is absolutely bang on. Uh, <laughs> 40 million. My God, wow, we're getting everybody in. Fine, good to see you, man. Um, old school, heavily old school, 62 million. Uh, no, it's just silly. I'll send it to Matt Croft. Um, I've, right, I'll tell you, that's great. Loads of guesses. Um, that's first class. Does anybody know that? It, it's not the X Factor final. You can have another guess. It was the highest audience when season. All oh, right, for 10 years. Oh, that could be true. That gives you a clue to how old it is. Um, it's Box is Googling like a lunatic, I reckon. It was the highest audience for 10 years when season one was released. There we go. That's probably very true. So so you'll know it's definitely older than that. In actual fact. Um, so if you want to if you want to keep guessing, that's fine. But we'll talk about stress. We'll talk about managing our stress. So Two oh, two Ronnie's good classics back on. Sketchbook was on the other night. Quality. I love a bit of porridge as well. But um, we'll talk about stress, stress and pressure, firstly. So I think everybody, you know, we can be under pressure. Stress is a long-term build-up. Um, you can also be de-stressed as well, kind of under stress, rust or bust kind of thing. So not having enough to do can sometimes cause a little bit of stress and simple mistakes can't start coming in. Um, but, but stress is caused when basically the perceived demands and coping mechanisms are in imbalance. So the demands that you see as being put on you are mismatched with the coping strategies that you have available to you. So the ways that we can kind of manage that really is either remove the demands or increase the coping strategies. They're the two kind of core options that we've got. Um, and we'll look at both of those. Now, just to, just to be, a, it's, it's good for us all at work, you know, can I recognise what that looks like in me? Can I recognise what that looks like in other people? Because perhaps I can 
kind of try and nip things in the bud or have conversations, etc. But you know, some of the things that you'll see, or, or uh, you won't always see all of these because they're a bit more internal. But but feelings that people had. So some of the things that we might have is um, is uh, you might feel slightly more irritable, uh, can feel overburdened and anxious. Um, so you're kind of constantly on the go. So it's like there's no off switch. You don't have an off switch built in. Um, can't enjoy stuff. You've, you've lost enjoyment. Um, loss of sense of humour. Um, uh, kind of disinterest in everything. Your hobbies, your, your friends. Um, so a bit of loneliness can come in there. Um, other things that, that can happen physically, you might get things like little panic attacks, um, hyperventilate a little bit, blurred vision um headaches he says holding his head um chest pains and high blood pressure uh, but like high blood pressure is not always linked to stress but could be a sign teeth grinding you might feel a little bit faint physically and other things that you might do a bit of indecision comes in um worry sometimes unnecessarily you avoid decision making be like a little bit tearful something like that um over or under indulge so overeat, over drink, over smoke, um, or not eat uh, is something else. Um, a bit snappy with people, sometimes clumsy as well. I think I think that kind of comes in, a bit of clumsiness, blundering about. Um, so, you know, I don't want to tell people <laughs> what stress is. It's, it's like, so what can we do? How do we manage it? So these these are not the only things, and there's a host of things out there that you can that you can find out as well, but these are some of the things that help. I think the stress diary helps. I think if you write things down, if you're having a bad day, um, now, the things that you've got to put in there is you've got to write down what the incident was and how it made you feel. Then you've got to talk about um, your, your reaction to that, how you how you react to that moment. And also, then we can start thinking about the resolution. But it's important that, that is it times of day, is it certain people, is it certain situations? Sorry for him, I've just seen in there as well, paranoia. And that's fair enough. I think I think everything's down to me it's always down to me i think that's a fair call so that um what you feel how you react and then we start thinking about a resolution for next time but stress star is a good um just writing stuff down generally can remove it from your mind um i mean i always have um i always have post-its by my bed um, i tend to have a lot of ideas and so i write stuff down and that kind of helps but you can you can put stuff down on paper if you feel overwhelmed by the amount of work if you just write it down get it out of your head you stop filling your head up, and then that, that's free to kind of come up with a resolution. Um, things we talk about time out. Um, I've done like uh, a bit of reading about energy management. Um, time management's important, but energy management's important. So, at really successful people, it's not about the hours you put in; it's about the making the best use of the time. And it and it's shown that people perform best when they're taking breaks. So it's actually shown that for every 50 minutes work people do, you should be looking at taking about a 15 minute break. Now, that's a real tough discipline and feels counterintuitive. But you have to manage your energy as well as your time. Time management's key. And I'm, I'm getting, that's my next tip. But, but energy management is really important. And, and I liken it to like a, a kind of a, a video game where, you know, you have to do a task. And uh, you've got a finite amount of energy and a finite amount of time. What you have to do is you have to keep topping your energy up and running through the energy bars. So if you've got enough energy to do the task before the time runs out, if you just run, your energy runs out, you don't do the task. You don't pick up any energy. You, you can't do the task. So, so you know, we've got to get that balance right. So remember to take on energy because without that, you, that's going to cause you stress. Management of time is key. And we all know the good old four box grid that Stephen Covey came up with about urgence and importance. And it is important. But there's another guy out there called Rory Vaden, who kind of introduces a theory about um, procrastinate on purpose, which, again, goes against some of the theories that we've seen uh, in years gone by. But, you know, yes, remove stuff if you can't do it. Automate stuff. Um, simple example that is online banking. That's a classic um, automation of a task that has saved time. But then once you look at all the stuff you've got, you've got stuff that you can do and you've got stuff that you choose to procrastinate. And we all pro we all procrastinate. We've probably all got three things to do at the moment. 
but we're only doing one of them. So I've procrastinated two anyway. So it's about a choice. Now, when you put it back in the top of the funnel, it might actually just drop out because somebody might just might not happen. So sometimes procrastination is not a bad thing. Um, discipline becomes crucial in stress management, in, in managing your, your demands and your coping strategies. So that's where you've, you've got to be rigid. And particularly this homeworking, that there's still a lot of us are in. You've got to say, right, this is when I am going to work. This is when I'm not going to work. So it's interesting. I've been I've been working this morning. I've been training. I finished at two thirty. Just gone, and I, it's like consciously right. I'm gonna, I'm gonna stop. There's twenty minutes in there, and now people want to say, "Oh, what are you doing that twenty minutes?" Do you know why? It's it's more important just to sit down, just to eat something, just to put the telly on, just just for ten minutes, just to recharge and then come back and do a tier three. That's the important thing. So make sure you set yourself some rules, and if you've got a coach or a a, a buddy or someone who can kind of encourage you to stick to those. Um, don't kind of measure yourself against other people. Measure yourself against yourself, which is important. And and ally to that, like trying to avoid perfectionism, which is easy just to go, just avoid perfectionism. But, you know, it can be a time stealer and it can cause stress and pressure. What's good enough? What's fit for purpose? And get that right in your mind. Get yourself a good support network. Make sure, man, maybe look at your diary and go, okay, so what have I got in there? I've got that, that time in with my people here. Uh, people of trust and value, not necessarily my staff. Um, as leaders, if I've got people out there who are leaders of people, we need to recharge. Yeah, we need to recharge. But people are overworked. Now, this is, the again, this counterintuitive balance. But take time off. As a leader, you should be encouraging people to use their leave. Um, the re- that's the reason we have leave, to stop us being stressed, to stop us being overworked. So here we sit, well, we, we're, past eight, we're past Easter now, we're into April, could argue, three months of the year. But how much leave have people actually taken? Uh, it's always it's always an interesting one. You know, uh, so be aware of that. And if people aren't taking time or they haven't booked time, encourage them to do so as a leader. That's important. Um, talk to somebody. Uh, just talk to somebody. If you're feeling that little bit of pressure that can easily develop into stress, talk to somebody. Um, it won't all just go away. And like, I th- like I've said before, things like headspace, um, um, calm, as little apps on your phone, can all help. But think about those three things about what I do, how I react, um, and then for how I behave. Little stress diaries, write stuff down and it will help. Trust me. All right. That's a diamond episode over, but you need to know the answer. The most watched program was most watched ever and if i tell you the year you're probably going to know the program the year was 1966 (laughs) yeah the question though was um was uh what was the what's the audience of the most watched tv program that was the question and they're not they're not from hilda ogden's uh parlor Nobody else on this call is young enough, old enough, Graham, to even know who Elder Ogden is, I don't think. Uh, maybe for him. Uh, they're good, aren't they? I'll see flying ducks. Uh, uh, there we go. Come on, Zoe. What's your answer? 1966. You must know what the, what the topic was. It was the World Cup final. 10 million. 10 million. It was, in fact, 32.3 million. But there's been some question about, because uh, recording methods are a bit dubious. Uh, but that is the that is the one that if you Google it. But the next one was um, 32.1 million, where where records were a lot stronger, and that was Diana's funeral. Um, nice cheery note to end on. Um, so we'll, we'll stick with the World Cup final because that's happy. That's the biggest audience. Um, but as has been suggested, highest audience for ten years was when uh, that's unfair. That's a sporting event. <laughs> I, t- I don't know the rules. <laughs> I made the rules. Uh, well, I do make the rules actually. It's my tier three. Uh, yeah, most most watch. It, well, it was, kind of was a program. So you know, or maybe I'll maybe maybe come back next week and I'll do the most watched TV show. I'm just trying to lure the audience in. Anyway, look at that. Forty minutes. It's been a pleasure. Lovely to see some work faces and friends from football. It's absolutely brill. Hope everyone's good. Um, yeah, <laughs> have a, have a great day.
And um, I'll look forward to seeing you next week. Or catch me up. Um, all, they're all there, all 60, 15 dead. Have a great day, everyone. Cheers, box. I'll see you soon, mate.